Our product or any non-investment related content made reference to directly or indirectly in this broadcast will be profitable. Equal any corresponding indicated historical performance level or levels be suitable for your portfolio or individual situation or prove successful. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Investment advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback LLC. <laughs> Losing money in the stock market roller coaster? Frustrated with the government taxing you into oblivion? Worried about inflation? How do you prepare for so many financial uncertainties? Welcome to the show that will help you develop your game plan. The Financial Quarterback with Josh Jelinski. Josh is a noted financial advisor and president of the Jelinski Advisory Group. And he's here to answer your questions. Call into the show at 800-321-0710. 800-321-0710. Now, let's kick off your financial future. Here's Josh Jelinski. Buddy, this is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, and we're taking your calls all hour. If you have questions on stocks, bonds, annuities, mutual funds, whatever question you have, no question is a dumb one except the one that you do not ask. So call us now. We're talking about de dollarization has begun. Last minute moves to lower your 2022 tax bill or boost your tax refund. And Roth IRAs don't require withdrawals unless they're inherited. Here's what you need to know. Investing in company plans and new forfeiture rules. So when you leave your job, what do you do with your 401k? Does it vest? Does it not? Some of you leave your job without realizing that you have a 401k with a vesting rule. Shame on you. You got to do your homework. So make sure you know when your company vests. So uh, very critical. A lot of plans will vest over a period of time. And so make sure when you quit, don't quit four years and eight months into quitting. Quit maybe five years after the plan vests. When you leave your job and aren't fully vested in your company plan account, the plan will forfeit your unvested portion. Recently, the IRS issued new guidance on this issue on forfeiture rules. Vesting refers to the portion of your plan benefit that you actually own and that can't be taken away from you. In a 401k plan, 403b, 457b, employee contributions, pre-tax deferrals, Roth contributions, and after-tax contributions, and earnings are always vested. So basically the money you put in. But the employer matching or profit sharing contributions and their earnings are often subject to a vesting schedule. According to IRAHelp.com, most plans with a vesting schedule credit you with a year of vesting for each 12-month period that you work at least 1,000 hours. Others credit you with a vesting service based on your total period of employment. A vesting schedule can be either cliff vested or graded vesting as follows. Number one, cliff vesting might go like this. In the first two years, you're not vested at all. But then years three through six, you're vested 100%. Graded vesting is 0% the first year, then 20% the second year, then 40% the third year. But that's after you've completed three years of service. 60% after four years of service, five years, 80%. Six years, 100. Uh, I don't believe they're you know, allowed to go much beyond six years. Company plan benefits must become vested 100% regardless of years of service when you reach your plan's normal retirement age, typically 59 and a half or 65. And when the plan terminates, Many plans also provide 100% vesting if you die or become disabled. 
When employees leave their job and aren't 100% vested, their unvested portion is forfeited. Forfeitures are allocated to a separate account within the plan. Your employer can't just magically take them. These are IRS rules. So if you don't follow the rule, you lose the money. Previously, the IRS had issued confusing rules on when the funds in the forfeiture account must be put to work and how they can be applied. The proposed IRS regulations published on February 24th of this year clear up prior guidance. The new rules require forfeitures be used no later than 12 months after the end of the plan's fiscal year in which the forfeiture occurred. This new timing rule should simplify plan administration. For example, Future Technologies has a layoff in December of 2023. As a result of this, the Future Tech 401k plan incurred 200000 in forfeitures during its calendar 23 fiscal year. In the past, the plan may have had to use those forfeitures by the end of 2023, which would have been difficult to carry out. With the new guidance, it has until the end of 2024 to apply the 2023 forfeitures. So this is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. If you're just joining us, we're live on iHeartRadio, WR710 AM, YouTube, Clubhouse, Twitter, at your financial QB. Forfeitures cannot revert to the employer. The proposed rules specify how they may be used. Number one, to pay for plan administrative expenses. Number two, to reduce future employer contributions. Or number three, to be allocated to existing participants' accounts. But you say, boss, I'm your son. Let's say my son goes to work for me. He works for me five years. We have a five-year graded schedule. He leaves in the middle of the fourth year, and there's 40 or 20% left in the account. You'll lose it, and it doesn't, it can't go back, even if it's your son. These are very strict rules. It can either be used to pay for planned administrative expenses, to reduce future employer contributions, or to be allocated to existing participant accounts. Existing participants, not old participants. These are IRS rules. They cannot be changed. They cannot be uh, reverted. So one of the things you want to ask your employer, do you have a cliff schedule or do you have a graded schedule? Do you vest over five years or six? Many times people think five years also is five years. It's five years of completed service. So you have to complete five full years before it is fully vested. Now, last week, and in some cases, you're not eligible for years. These amounts are like six years. Now, why is that good? Because back in the day, you'd have a pension. And if you left your boss, you forfeited a lot more of your pension based on their schedule. So these rules are set up by the IRS to protect employers. That being said, employers have to follow them. And you have to follow them. And you can't say claim ignorance. Oh, you know, I left four years and eight months. No, you, you missed it. Sorry. This is the rules. Last week, China and Brazil reached an agreement to settle trades in one another's currency. Folks, this is the de-dollarization. Over the past 15 years, China has slowly replaced the U.S. as the main trading partner of resource-rich Brazil. Why are we helping the Brazilians? If they're trading with our enemies, pull out, pull out of all trading deals. You know, it's like, uh, what did Trump do? He made NATO, NATO pay up. Make Brazil pay up. We don't care about your, you know, Brazilian beaches and, you know, statue. You could have a wonderful statue to Jesus. But here's the issue. They are now trading with the enemy, Chicoms. And as such, that shift may have been inevitable. But when within the context of recent circumstances, this appears to be another in a series of recent blows to the central role of the dollar in global trade. The dollar in some shape or form will likely be around for a long time. So I'm not trying to alarm you. 
but by weaponizing dollar dominance, which the U.S. has, by spending money like drunken sailors and permitting expanding mandates to disorient U.S. monetary policy, the dollar's fate as the universal language of trade is over and over the long haul may already be sealed. So long as the political will to a plan uh, U.S. upend U.S. fiscal and monetary policies to those consistent with the Constitution of Sound Money remain an inconceivable matter. This from uh, AIER's Peter Earl, who we'll have on in future episodes within the next week or two. Uh, may have him on even tomorrow. So folks, you want to listen, full interview with the author of de-dollarization has begun. De-dollarization will proceed and slower more quickly. The dollar will lose ground abroad. I got news for you. McFly, we're already losing dollar dominance. By one estimation that I read, the dollar accounts for something like 62% of all global trade. I don't know if we can get that stat up, but it's not like you're going to wake up one day because there's a lot of scammers. We've had, um, you know, it's like that guy. There are these authors. They're trying to sell you, and they say, the dollar is collapsing before your very eyes. Well, they're, they're using that so you buy their book. I mean, I remember reading a book in 2011 called The Currency Wars that did prophesy this very thing. But it's not so much that dollarization is de-dollarization is happening in a day. It's happening slowly before our very eyes. Why? Because you're letting it. Here's the thing. You could be on the left. You could be on the right. But if we don't get our fiscal house in order, which means balanced budgets or at least trying to balance budgets, our trading partners like Brazil will say, you know what? I got to protect myself from the U.S. weaponizing their currency, devaluing their dollar. And so as the world's reserve currency, by the way, also another thing to, to uh, release some of the fears, it's sort of like the British pound sterling. Does the British pound sterling exist? Certainly. Do we really use it as a global reserve? Not at all. So Great Britain had to, you know, revise things. They had to act a little differently. They weren't the cleanest, dirty shirt in the laundry pile. And these types of trading relationships that China is seeking are directly upending uh, U.S. dollar dominance. And a lot of people uh, are against free trade agreements. A lot of people were against the Pacific, uh, whatever the thing, I think Hillary was negotiating for Obama. And I'm a conservative guy, but I'm, I'm for those types of deals because what ends up happening is China is filling the vacuum that Trump and now Biden left in global trade. People think, oh, you know, screw them overseas, care about America first. Well, you got to realize, you know what, then China cuts the deal with Brazil and Brazil's main trading partner is China. It's not the U.S. and we're screwed more. So you got to realize free trade used to be a cornerstone of conservatism. And then all of a sudden it became this bad thing. Now, I'm not saying our trade agreements aren't uh, haven't been bad at times. But here's the thing. We were the global reserve currency for a number of years with them. And now we're screwing ourselves slowly, quickly, rapidly. And de-dollarization has begun. Also, we'll talk to you about how to protect yourself from scams. Most notably on social media. People saying, hey, buy my course for $50,000. And I'll show you how to dry Lambo like me. We'll talk about that. When we return, this is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Tune in to the financial quarterback, Josh Jelinski, this weekend and learn how to protect your financial future in a down economy. Josh and his team at the Jelinski Advisory Group can help so you lower Jason, your taxes we will and lower go to your you risk in these uncertain you don't times mind sharing about with a 27-point checklist uh, 3, designed to improve your financial health. That Whether you you're had, worried about runaway and, uh, prices, fear of an upcoming recession, or a stock market meltdown, tune in to the financial quarterback and count and on Josh Jelinski to call the play. 
for a free copy of Josh's book, The Retirement Reality Check. Can you call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. Or visit Talensky.org. That's J-A-L-I-N-S-K-I dot org. So, folks, Maybe this is my live like radio show. Higher, or that the stock market Invite is headed for bear territory. To or protect maybe you're themselves about another great recession. from scammers, Josh and we'll Jelinski, talk about the financial anything from and help IRAs, you protect your family's financial future in times like these. We just started talking about the financial vesting schedule to on your 401k. Your that, by the way, was and not for your risk. Call 888 5674 to take advantage of Josh's 27 point plan to achieve financial health. And when you call, you'll receive a free copy of Josh's book, Retirement Reality Check. Tune in every weekend to the Financial Quarterback and call 888-988-5674 to receive your free copy of Retirement Reality Check. Okay, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski, the Financial Quarterback. If you have questions on uh, protecting yourself from scammers, uh, Jason, you have a story uh, you got scammed on social media. Go ahead. Yes, thank you so much. And I agree with what you were saying financially. Um, it's a global marketplace. Everybody knows they shop online. You can't tell what border. I'm actually across the border. I'm in Pickering, Ontario, Canada, right? Uh, around with Americans and say, I'm from the country above you that loves you. <laughs> we have to love you. You can attack us. But, you know, we're friendly countries. We go across the border just like that, shopping all the time. And now you don't even have to drive across the Buffalo border because everything is done online, right? That's why people come across to our place for insulin and pay 10% as much, right? So um, on CH, I, I was renting out my place. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I went to my girlfriend's place in Georgia while I was getting my place renovated. Uh, I was doing a renovation, and then um, she broke up with me last January, so I went back to my place. Each is and, Clubhouse uh, for listeners listening on radio or iHeartRadio. Uh, go ahead, Jason. Yeah, so I went back to my place, and I sold my property for a million dollars. So the the thing is, when you have a lot of money, you have to be careful because it makes you maybe take more risks, right? That's why people win the lottery after two years. On average, they're broke because they're causing Vinny show up and everybody got a business idea, okay? So I wanted to invest in Christian video game series that I wanted to do by 2030, and I thought the fast way to do it would be to find this uh, somebody that I, he said he did video games, and he was going to do a mock-up for me. So we did a contract, right? And $7,000, $3,000 was a down payment, and he did have references, right? He had a picture of him with an astrophysicist at a game, video game uh, contest competition that he said he won. And he had a picture with a physicist, and he showed me his mock-ups and everything, and they looked good. So I said, okay, this has to be the guy. I wasn't advertising. He was in a room on CH, and he said he does games, right? And he's like game something or something like that. So I said, okay. And I, so I made the decision to pay the down payment. So he did the down payment, and then right after I did the down payment, he tried to change the contract. He said, by the way, you have to agree to keep me as head game designer forever. And I said, what? <laughs> what if you aren't any good in 2028? What if I find somebody better? I worked at Microsoft. I know you don't sign a contract and say the person's going to be your married for life forever, right? What if he's dishonest? And then he blocked me. And he took my three thousand dollars. Wow, Which Jason, I'm not speaking. That's crazy. Um, and you got to be careful. You got to do due diligence. And thank God you only gave money up front. That's why even like if you're if you're getting your home repaired, make sure you don't give more than twenty or thirty percent up front, or 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 say, hey, can we do it in a month? So let's say the charge to repair your home is five hundred thousand. Give them maybe 20% up front or 10% up front and then in stages every 30 days. Because I've heard about that from contractors as well as from scammers on social media. So one tip, do your due diligence. Second, do background checks. Third, uh, 
Pay a little bit as you go so you can see the type of work. Make sure you know, you know, I don't know, you, you have legal agreements. Also, one thing that can check out, check out, particularly if people are giving financial advice, because you hear a lot of people, oh, I'm going to coach you uh, in real estate investing or in stock investing. Are they fiduciaries? Will they sign a fiduciary contract? So, for example, say you work with us for 45 days, but you've signed a contract that you'll pay us a quarterly fee. We, we, we reimburse. Uh, we, we have to go back and credit people uh, who leave us before the end of the quarter so many days. So uh, what we do uh, as fiduciaries is vital. So make sure you have a fiduciary contract with the people giving you advice on your money. doesn't mean... The vice is always having a fiduciary doesn't always mean that the advice will work out, but it means there's some protection for you, especially uh, in related to the fees and all that. So give us a call 800-321-0710. If you have questions on stocks, bonds, annuity funds, we are live on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Clubhouse. So if you have a question, uh, come on up, ask us, call us 800-321-0710. We are live taking your questions on dollar de-dollarization and weaponization of the money. India and Malaysia, for example, have recently begun using the rupee to settle certain trades. And there have been perennial warnings about the Saudis and other energy exporters moving away from the dollar. On that note, China also recently executed a test trade for natural gas with France last week that settled in the yuan. It's not just the conscription of the dollar in economic warfare, but error-fraught monetary policy regimes that are driving various interests away from the greenback. Greenbacks are dollars, if you don't know what that is. The monetary policy response to the 08 financial crisis saw the dollar's value whipped around unpredictably, and the response to the outbreak of COVID was even more frenetic. So if you're from China or from Brazil or from France or Saudi Arabia or India or Malaysia, I don't blame you that you don't trust the U.S. dollar because the U.S. dollar you know, they print it, they inflate the money, we inflate the money supply. Now, I would say, would you rather trust the U.S. or the Chinese? I mean, give me a break. So why are we giving money to NATO? I mean, there were points there that Trump made. If the French, if the French are doing deals with the China, cut them out. Tell them, go eat your baguette and your croissant elsewhere, buddy. Um, you know, go eat your wine. We're going to import the wine from California, not from the Bordeaux region. Or we're going to get the wine from Italy. You know, you there is a certain deal where now, because of these currency wars or de-dollarization, we're sort of weaponizing trade. Trump did that with the Chinese. But in some ways, it's good. Some ways, it's bad. By the way, I'm a, I'm a free trader through and through. But... Let's have responsible handling of our dollars to give our international partners a sense of trust. As the world's reserve currency, the dollar is the default currency in trade and a global unit of account. Because of that, every central bank, treasury, exchequer, and major firm on earth keeps a large portion of their foreign exchange holdings in U.S. dollars. Now, that, from what I've read, it's like 60 to 70 percent right now. And because holders of dollars seek returns on those balances, the ubiquity of dollars drives a substantial portion of the demand for U.S. bonds in world financial markets. So we need other countries to trust us to buy our debt. So it, it is a circle. We need to be the cleanest dirty shirt in the laundry pile. And I still say we are, but we're at risk of losing that. 
The switch from dollars to a yuan real settlement basis in Chinese-Brazilian trade is only the latest in a growing trend. Discussions of a more politically neutral reserve currency has gone on for decades. Remember the Amero? For what I could see is the dollar might comprise 50%, then 10% yuan, 5% Bitcoin, 5% something else, you know, rupee, 5% Swiss franc, 5% Canadian, 5% Australia. Now, so what we have to make sure, whatever political party you are, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, advocate for fiscal responsibility because this consequence is bad for everybody. You could believe whatever you want on transgender Olympic athletes, but, you know, whatever. But the thing that you have to really worry about is... That's like a diversion issue. What's happening before our eyes is the dollar is losing its world reserve currency standard. Do they teach you about that, Alex? Alex is a young man. They don't teach him about that. That if, if dollars aren't the, the global standard of trade, we are all screwed. I don't care if you like uh, whatever, you know, now... I trust the U.S. more than I trust China, Jason says in the chat, and I agree. Um, but it's very important for us all, regardless of political standing, to say enough's enough. Stop spending money like a drunken sailor. Learn to live within your means. Have a predictable currency. The profound economic, but, but I predict we will slowly, it's not the dollar will be worthless. It's that the dollar will be worth a little bit less every year. And you'll see, okay, the French, they try this. It's like, you know, a kid eating a you know cookie from the cookie jar without their parents seeing. Okay, uh, Big Daddy U.S., I'm going to take a little bite out of this cookie. I'm going to put it back. Then I'm going to take another nibble. Then they're going to take another nibble. You think, uh, has, have the Biden administration made the French the enemy? Now, you can't make all of your global trading partners enemies. But you got to cut deals with them to make global trade more attractive. Same thing with Canada. Same thing with French. But why are the Fran French doing this? I don't know, you know. The profound economic disruption experienced by countries like Iran and more recently Russia after being evicted from the dollar-based trading systems like SWIFT, however, have led many nations to consider imminent contingency plans. So you might say, bad Russians. They're going to say, forget you, U.S., we're going to trade with China. And, you know, what are we doing about it? Nothing. So give us a call. I want to hear your opinions. 800-321-0710. We're talking about de-dollarization, protecting your money from scammers and more. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Maybe it seems like prices can't get much higher or that the stock market is headed for bear territory. Or maybe you're worried about another great recession. Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, can help you protect your family's financial future in times like these. Tune in this weekend to the financial quarterback to hear how Josh and his team can help you decrease your tax liability and lower your risk. Call 888-988-5674 to take advantage of Josh's 27-point plan to achieve financial health. And when you call, you'll receive a free copy of Josh's book, Retirement Reality Check. Tune in every weekend to The Financial Quarterback and call 888-988-5674 to receive your free copy of Retirement Reality Check. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. 
with your calls at 800-321-0710. Don't be bashful. Call us right now. 800-321-0710. Other hosts just sound cute when they're really scripted. We're live, unscripted, uncensored. And we don't just edit the show to make the host sound smart. I really am. So give us a call now. 800-321-0710 with any and every financial question you have. The massively expansionary response to the pandemic in 2020 was followed by an initially dismissive posture toward the outbreak of inflation, which reached four decade highs before an aggressive contractionary shift in policy that destabilized various financial institutions, banks, and destabilized world trade. Simply replacing fiat currency of the largest economy in the world, that's us, the U.S., with the fiat currency of a smaller economy is hardly a viable replacement strategy. Moving away from the dollar brings substantial barriers to exit as well as network effects to overcome owing to historical, technological, financial, and obstacles. The U.S. is the de facto currency of East Timor, Ecuador, El Salvador, the Federated States of Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, Palau, Panama, Zimbabwe. Further, the comparatively relatively transparent conduct of monetary policy in the U.S., has led no less than 44 central banks in other countries and currency boards to peg their currencies to it. And dollars are the cheapest means of access to acquire nominally risk-free U.S. Treasury instruments. So we need to go around and we need to be touting the benefits of free trade. And we need to be uh, expanding the U.S. as a trade partner, not just to 22 nations, but to 100. So free trade is a cornerstone of a good democracy. Did they teach you that in school, Al? No. no. They teach, oh, you know, we'll protect that the children are starving in this country too. Let's protect them. Well, you're an idiot. If the U.S. is no longer the reserve currency of the world, our kids will suffer even greater. But I get it, you know, a lot of people believe that. And it makes sense on one level. Hey, let's, let's, uh, there are children starving here. Why take care of the world? Well, because the world will take care of us. They will buy our debt. And slowly and slowly, they've been drifting away. Now, I am not for unsmart trade agreements, but I am for free trade. Some of the, and they say fair trade. Well, what does fair trade mean? It means you're putting restrictions on it. It means you're weaponizing your currency. You're weaponizing your trade agreements. So what that leads others to believe is the U.S. can't be trusted. You might say, well, we're not Russia. We're not Iran. You notice, I didn't say we have free trade agreements with Canada, with France, with Mexico, with uh, and we have many different trade agreements with many different countries, but, you know, we should have a hundred different trade agreements, you know, that are, and we do have trade agreements all over, but we have a lot of restrictive trade, weaponized trade that I don't know why people have just, uh, you know, adopted isolationism. It's not, it's a losing strategy. We're seeing what's happening. Over generational time frames, the shift could force a reduction in the U.S. government spending. Do you like your Medicare checks? Do you like your Social Security checks? All of that is paid for on the backs of people buying U.S. Treasuries. Insurance companies, banks, uh, other countries. Should that scenario play out, the long-term effect of using access to dollars as a bludgeon of American foreign policy could well be higher than average inflation and or higher taxes on American citizens. You're the ones going to pay for it. Nevertheless, a new conference in New Delhi last week focused on increasing cooperation between Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa touched on just such a plan. Variations of such a currency order 
have been dubbed Bretton Woods III. So while they're talking about Olympic transgender athletes, they're having Bretton Woods III. And some non-commodity proposals bear a curious similarity to the since-discarded Facebook currency plan, first called the Libra, or later Diem. Owing to the role that U.S. dollar pervasiveness plays in the international appetite for U.S. treasuries, a side effect of the long-term attempt to establish alternative reserve currencies may be decreasing interest in tradable U.S. debt over shorter time frames that would likely result in higher yields, which is happening, and higher levels of debt service, which is happening on securities issued by the U.S. Treasury. So we got to call up South Africa. We got to call up India. We got to call up Brazil and say, why are you cutting deals with the Russians? Why are you cutting deals with the Chinese? What's going on? But are we? No, we're asleep at the wheel. Some of the twists being discussed provide alluring dollar replacements such as cryptocurrencies, central bank digital currencies, or baskets of commodities representative of a given nation or region's competitive advantage. The latter scenario in which, for example, certain African nations in currencies backed by copper deposits and so on is interesting, but faces substantial hurdles. So, folks, any comments on U.S. dollar weaponization? Give us a call now, 888-988-JOSH. Uh, next, we're going to go to Jason with a comment. If you have a question, call us now, 800-321-0710. And up next, we're talking about a tax deadline is approaching. There is stu still a few ways to reduce your tax bill for last year, experts say. We'll talk about that up next. Go ahead, Jason. Thank you so much. I agree with you long term. I like the way that the U.S. dollar is the standard because once that's not the case, it will make it very hard to do business worldwide, to travel worldwide. And the challenge is if the people of the world don't understand what's happening with economics, They'll just be watching TV all the time, and someday they'll just turn on the TV, and it will be a Chinese station, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Jason, I'm not speaking. Well, uh, thank you for the call, uh, Jason. Um, I don't think, I think we got to worry that it's just going to be the Chinese. I think what will happen is it'll be a little bit of Bitcoin here, as El Salvador was trying to do. It'll be a little bit of U.S. Treasury over there. It'll be a little bit of Chinese Yuan over there, a little bit of the rupee. And slowly, by the way, it's already happening. I believe the, the U.S. doesn't even account for all global trade anymore. It's like 60 to 70 percent. Now, once the calendar year ends, your toolbox of options to reduce taxes is smaller. However, there are a few last-minute moves you need to make before the tax filing deadline which is April 15th for most Americans. Typically, if you're in the 10 or 12% bracket, you're probably better off putting money into a Roth IRA. But if you expect higher earnings in retirement, you may skip the upfront deduction for tax-free withdrawals in the future. According to CNBC's article, Ways to Lower Your 2022 Tax Bill, we're going to talk about some ways to lower your tax bill when we return. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Tune in to the financial quarterback, Josh Jelinski, this weekend and learn how to protect your financial future in a down economy. Josh and his team at the Jelinski Advisory Group can help you lower your taxes and lower your risk in these uncertain times with a 27-point checklist designed to improve your financial health. Whether you're worried about runaway prices, fear of an upcoming recession, or a stock market meltdown, tune in to the financial quarterback and count on Josh Jelinski to call the play. For a free copy of Josh's book, The Retirement Reality Check, 
Call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. Or visit Talensky.org. That's J-A-L-I-N-S-K-I dot org. Maybe it seems like prices can't get much higher. Or that the stock market is headed for bear territory. Or maybe you're worried about another great recession. Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, can help you protect your family's financial future in times like these. Tune in this weekend to the financial quarterback to hear how Josh and his team can help you decrease your tax liability and lower your risk. Call 888-988-5674 to take advantage of Josh's 27-point plan to achieve financial health. And when you call, you'll receive a free copy of Josh's book, Retirement Reality Check. Tune in every weekend to The Financial Quarterback and call 888-988-5674 to receive your free copy of Retirement Reality Check. We're back. This is Josh Jelinski, The Financial Quarterback, inviting you to join me at, uh, in just, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes. We're going to do a special live on YouTube with special guest Tom Gober. Forensic accountant talking about is your bank or life insurance company or annuity safe? Say, is it a safe place to put your money? And what you need to be worried about. This is a forensic accountant that will actually talk about the real money behind your money. So Tommy Lucas, uh, a, an enrolled agent at Moison, Fitzgerald, and Tamayo said pre-tax IRA contributions are the first option to consider. So have you done a pre-tax deposit for 2022, which may offer you a tax deduction to reduce your AGI, adjusted gross income? Roth IRAs provide tax-free growth without the upfront deduction. The contribution limit for 2022 is 6,000, with a 1,000 more for investors age 50 and older. Eligibility for the deduction depends on your workplace plan participation and income. So, folks, if you want to know, am I eligible to do a Roth IRA or traditional IRA? Sometimes people think they make too much money for a Roth, and they meet with us, and we tell them, hey, you know what? You can actually put money in a Roth in greater increments than you think with Roth conversions, Roth 401ks, or Roth IRAs, or a spousal Roth. Call us, 888-988-JOSH. If you want help, getting your IRA contribution done before tax deadline, which is April 18th. However, you need to consider more than the current year's tax break before making pre-tax contribution. Contribute to a spousal IRA. So number one, You can contribute to your own IRA. Number two, you can contribute to a spousal IRA. And we'll take your calls at 800-321-0710. We are live on Clubhouse, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Hit the subscribe button. Have you given thought to a spousal IRA if you're married Married couples filing jointly may also consider a lesser-known option before the tax filing deadline, spousal IRA deposits. So if you're 49 or, or younger, you can put in six grand for you, six grand for your spouse in a Roth. That's 12 grand, growing tax-free for as long as you and your spouse lives. IRA contributions require earned income such as wages from a job or self-employment earnings. But spousal IRAs allow both spouses to contribute to separate accounts based on the other spouse's earnings. So if you have Sally Homemaker married to Jim the businessman, you can do a spousal IRA for Sally even though she has no earned income. If you have Manny... The uh, stay-at-home dad and, I don't know, Veronica, the uh, businesswoman, Manny, the stay-at-home dad, can get six grand in his Roth IRA or traditional IRA. 
So make sure even if one spouse doesn't work outside the home or retires early, you figure out if you can still contribute to your own IRA as long as your spouses earn income. For 2022, even though it's 2023, you have till April 18th, and you can make total contributions of up to 14000 as long as one spouse has, a, has had at least that much taxable income. Collectively, annual spousal IRA deposits can exceed joint taxable income or two times the yearly IRA limit. So give us a call now, 800-321-0710, 800-321-0710. If you have questions on stocks, bonds, annuities, mutual funds, whatever question you have, no question is a dumb one except the one that you do not ask. So we're talking about IRA contributions de-dollarization, and protecting yourself from scams. Up next, we're going to talk about how to boost your HSA or health savings account. If your employer offers it, you may want to take advantage of it. We'll tell you why. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Maybe it seems like prices can't get much higher or that the stock market is headed for bear territory. Or maybe you're worried about another great recession. Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, can help you protect your family's financial future in times like these. Tune in this weekend to the financial quarterback to hear how Josh and his team can help you decrease your tax liability and lower your risk. Call 888-988-5674 to take advantage of Josh's 27-point plan to achieve financial health. And when you call, you'll receive a free copy of Josh's book, Retirement Reality Check. Tune in every weekend to The Financial Quarterback and call 888-988-5674 to receive your free copy of Retirement Reality Check. Will has a comment on Clubhouse. The problem is people don't want to talk about hard and complicated things that will impact their own lives. It's easier to talk about nuanced social issues that impact He says 0.5%. I would say it's like 0.01% of the population because it allows people to live removed from their own reality. You know, and that's true. Rome is burning. Play the fiddle. Go to the Colosseum. You know, I was a student of the Roman Republic. And the Roman Republic took a whole course on Rome and the Roman Empire. It was a fascinating discussion. And, you know, Roman history is certainly much more complicated than this. But if you study the greatness of Rome was the Roman familia concept. That in a lot of senses, the family was its own government. Then families made up the clans. Then the clans and eventually became the Roman Senate. And the senator was, would represent them in one of the first constitutional republics. But as Roman prosperity grew, as the people grew fat and happy and rich based on Roman dominance, suddenly various senators wanted to gain power from Marcus Crassus to Pompey to Caesar. Then they scored a coup. Julius Caesar became the first dictator. And then Augustus was smarter, Caesar Augustus. He became, you know, he didn't get knifed in the back by Brutus. But what what did he do? He said, oh, you know what? I'll be the first, but among equals. So I'm going to allow everybody to pretend they're equal, but I'll be the first among equals. Because you need an executive to make decisions, wise decisions. And our founding fathers were even a little bit, you know, they didn't want to have a king. They were even a little worried about the whole executive branch, that it would end up becoming much like uh, the Roman dictators did because they were student of histories. Kind of in a way has. I mean, you have executive orders. Uh, Presidents have enormous power. If you look at what's going on with the military, they can in essence, declare war even without an act of Congress. So 
study Roman history. But by the time Rome was burning, I mean, I don't know, what do you, how many, you know, it was years after Augustus. And, like, the, the ship already left the station. That's sort of where we are now. I don't know if we can pull it back, but we can. I mean, there are people trying to say, hey, let's live fiscally responsible within our means. That's the whole uh, genesis behind the Bitcoin movement. Because, hey, I don't want the Fed, who's not even, think about this, Federal Reserve, they're not even elected. Nobody elects the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve Chairman is appointed by the executive branch. So it's like we're in Rome. So Mike had a question on what is the limit for IRA contributions? It is seven grand. It's seven grand uh, if you're 15 older, six grand if you're 49 and younger, and you could do a Roth or an IRA. Another great way to save for the future is what's called an HSA. And we'll talk about that, but I really want to talk about Rome for a second. So, in a lot of ways, the breakdown of the Roman Empire is paralleling the breakdown of the U.S. Empire. So, you had strong families, strong family units, strong churches. Now what has happened? The family is diminishing. The church diminishing. State is rising, filling the vacuum. You actually need, I would argue, a strong church, a strong state, and a strong family for constitutional republics to thrive. But we're seeing, you know, kind of a, uh, our country is sort of degrading. So we're just, we're not having a long-term perspective. We're just voting ourselves more money printing. You know, think about what we did with Silicon Valley Bank. You know what? Uh, if you're a founder and you made, you know, $100 million on a deal and you had your bank with Silicon Valley uh, and your company's now worth zero, we're going to protect your $100 million in deposits. Silicon Valley Bank... You do bad things with investor money. You don't think about risk management. You know, it will bail you out. And they don't even set limits. That's why it, this is, you know, corrupt. Because if they really cared about the little guy, they could say, you know what? We're going to limit deposits, depositors insurance. We're going to go from 250 grand to 1 million or to 5 million or even 10 million. That would have given the same measure of consumer confidence. But instead they say unlimited. Why? Because all those people are donors. So give us a call. 800-321-0710. Tom says for 2023 it's 6,500. Yes. But for no at all. But for 2022 it's six grand. And you have till April 18th of this year to do it for 2022. Now, uh, we're going to go to Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Good morning, Josh. Uh, I like your lecture on the Romans. I've always been interested in that. But uh, what I wanted to ask you was, what happens if countries that sell us oil demand that we pay them in a currency other than the U.S. dollar? Well, if I were... The U.S., I would focus on having sustainable drilling, going completely energy independent. I mean, we're, we're, we were close to that a few years ago. So, I mean, drill, baby, drill. That's what I would say. As an administration, I don't think that's foreseeable, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I don't know. if that happens, where well, we have to start paying in another currency, wouldn't that cause even more inflation in the United States? Oh, totally. Why do you think... Why do you think a pizza costs twenty six dollars now? Right. These, this is why economics matters, and it's not something we're taught. If if we are taught it in school today, it's socialist economic theory. That's why I'll never send my kids to a socialist training ground, known as 
uh, an American college without vetting their curriculum. I mean, and there's still, you know, good conservative schools out there, but there's like 10. <laughs> so, no, I think it would be a big problem. Higher inflation, higher taxes, definitely. And lower benefits. So, uh, any other comments on that, Greg? Sorry? Any other comments on that? No, no, I was just saying that, you know, we studied in high school about the Romans and you know, the teacher said that high inflation was also one other cause because they devalued the currency that the silver coins eventually had very little silver content in them. They had just like a little coating called a silver wash. So, of course, prices went up because people felt they're not being paid in something that's as valuable. You know, and it caused all kinds of dislocations and problems, amongst other things, a lot of re- other reasons. So, Well, moral decay leads to economic decay you know if you don't believe in eternal consequences you generally won't believe in financial consequences Um, although i think even if you don't believe in certain things you should believe in sound money so give us a call folks 888-988-JOSH during the break for the free review wxq hd2 new york an iheart radio station listen on the free iheart radio app for all your music radio and podcasts as the day winds down he's wound up with his take on the top stories jesse kelly weeknights six to nine seven ten w o r the voice of new york an iheart radio station 40 degrees at 10 o'clock. Good morning. I'm Paul DeCastro. COVID is causing life expectancy to plunge here in New York City. The city's health department says life expectancy fell hey, I want everybody to, to, to uh, type yes in the chat bar if you can hear me right now. Yes. Black New Yorkers, if you have a financial question, also type that in. Years of age, and do me a favor and share this room with friends. For if you're sick of dumb rooms on Clubhouse for white and Yorkers, scammers and spammers. In addition, uh, please share the room. Say the city's mortality rate in 2020, fueled by the pandemic, surpassed that of the Spanish flu in 1918. I'm Lisa G. WOR News. The police are investigating a fatal stabbing on a Brooklyn subway line Thursday night. 18-year-old Isaiah Calazzo was found with a stab wound to his abdomen as a northbound D train pulled into the Atlantic Avenue Barclay Center station around 11:30. The Staten Island resident was pronounced dead at a nearby hospital shortly after. Police think he got into an argument with a man on the train who then stabbed him before taking off. No weapon was found and the investigation is continuing. Andrew Whitman, WOR News. Vice President Kamala Harris in Tennessee yesterday to meet with the three state Democratic lawmakers who faced an extremely rare Republican-led expulsion vote this week after they protested Tennessee's gun laws following the deadly Nashville school shooting last month. The truth must never be stifled or silenced when it is on behalf Justin Pearson, Gloria Johnson, and Justin Jones standing together, arms locked. Vice President Kamala Harris meeting with all three Democratic lawmakers who faced an extremely rare Republican-led expulsion vote this week. President Biden also video conferencing with the trio and inviting them to the White House. And that's correspondent Faith Abube. In sports, round two of the Masters back underway after play was suspended yesterday. Brooks Kepka in the clubhouse. He's the leader at 12 under par. John Rahm is two shots back. With two holes remaining in this second round, Tiger Woods right on the cut line at plus two. He's playing the final hole of the second round. Meanwhile, baseball Mets are home for the Marlins this afternoon. The Yanks visit Baltimore tonight on the ice. Rangers skate at Columbus. The Devils visit the mighty Boston Bruins. And the Islanders making that playoff push. They are home for the Philadelphia Flyers. Here's your WOR Weather Channel forecast. Dry weather through this weekend. There will be a few clouds early on this Saturday. Then plenty of sun for the afternoon with light winds at a high eventually hitting 52. Tonight partly cloudy with a low of 39. A little bit warmer for Easter tomorrow with sunshine at a high of 55. And on Monday sunny with a high reaching the low to mid 60s. I'm meteorologist Jeff Marr. And it's currently 40 degrees in Central Park. Next news at 11. Start your day with Len Berman and Michael Rito in the morning, 6 till 10 on Monday. I'm Paul DeCastro on 710 WOR and NBC News radio station. Tired of losing money in the stock market? 
roller coaster? Frustrated with the government taxing you into oblivion? Worried about inflation? How do you prepare for so many financial uncertainties? Welcome to the show that will help you develop your game plan. The Financial Quarterback with Josh Jelinski. Josh is a noted financial advisor and president of the Jelinski Advisory Group. And he's here to answer your questions. Call into the show at 800-321-0710. 800-321-0710. Now, let's kick off your financial future. Here's Josh Jelinski. Okay, we're back. We're talking the Roman Republic, the demise of the American Empire, boosting your health savings accounts. People often say, well, if it's so bad in the economy, how do, how do we grow? That's what they want us to believe. But you know what? Build your family strong. Take them to church or synagogue. Instill family values. Instill belief in God. Work on educating your familia. The only way we're going to get back to basics is by having a strong family unit in the U.S., and then we'll have a sound money system as well because they kind of go hand in hand. But the silver wash coins, that's a good example of what's happening today. We're just, you know, papering over our money woes. And it will, there will come a time when, you know, maybe a barrel of money buys a bushel of wheat. So be careful. But don't get discouraged because the future is always brighter than people make it sound. So what that means is, I firmly believe many of you listening to the news, I mean, I've stopped listening to many, I mean, I, I, I listen to financial news, but stop listening to political news because it's just depressing every day. Or news on the world, or that, you know, this, this thing happens, or this thing happens, and you can get depressed, and you can be kind of stuck in your room uh, in the fetal position saying, uh, you know, our world's just getting bad. You know what? Mentor somebody. If you're alone, nobody cares about you. You're listening on the radio right now. Volunteer. Volunteer to church. I talked to somebody the other day. They said, hey, Josh, I'm retired. I feel like I'm a toy that's being put on the shelf. And what do you do? Well, you make sure people play with you if you're a toy. So you go and you help mentor young adults. A lot of people don't have father figures or mother figures in their life. Unofficially adopt somebody. Encourage them. And because people are always struggling with more than you know. So in this time of Easter reflection as we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we celebrate the Paschal or the Pesach lamb sacrificed for the Israelites and the deliverance from bondage and Pharaoh, uh, use this time to kind of reconnect your faith, family, and financial discipline. If you're if you're listening to this, you probably have some degree of financial discipline, or else you wouldn't be attracted to a show like this. But it's very easy to get depressed. You know what? Find some kids this weekend who have nobody to color eggs with. Alex, do you have? It? Are you coloring eggs this week? Go, go color eggs, and um, whatever it is. You know, whatever it is that you do, go have a nice time and uh, enjoy yourself. I got a, I'm going to go color eggs after this show. That's what I'm going to do with my kids. We'll play catch outside. We'll read the, we read the Exodus this week as we celebrated, celebrated Passover. We, we uh, also celebrate Good Friday and Easter, so we celebrate all three. I'm like the UN of religions. No, <laughs> but we, lo we love Passover, love Good Friday, love Easter. And we read all of the scripture passages where we learn about those stories. 
So that way your kids aren't ignorant. And uh, they may not get that from school. They may not get that from their friends, but have them get that from you. And they'll love the sense of tradition. Do an Easter egg hunt. And one of the things my wife does every year that's exciting is she puts, she does an Easter egg hunt. We do an Easter, you know, the traditional Easter egg hunt we do in the afternoon on Sunday. We'll do Easter uh, eggs today. And then we will do Easter eggs celebrating um, on Thursday or Friday. We'll do the Passover, have lamb. We'll do a traditional Seder. But when you're, um, one of the things she does that's really great is she cuts out the various sort of stations of the cross. So each kid, so we have seven kids, mind you. So I don't know how she's going to do this for all seven, but she might do this for four. I think last year she did it for five of the seven or six of the seven. I had five and six do it together because seven's a baby. And she'll cut out various Bible verses of the Easter story. So it leads them to the Easter basket. That, that's why they're, they're realizing, and now they even have Easter chocolate crosses. Because what's the Easter bunny, you know? Uh, why, why the heck do we have a bunny, you know? I guess to celebrate the newness of life and spring. So they get their Easter basket after having read all of the verses on the Easter thing. So give us a call now. 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-JOSH. Then we get some idiot on YouTube who says, Josh, you'd be better off at your job leaving your religious beliefs out of your discussion. Why? That's precisely why there's a problem today. If you have no belief in eternal consequences, if you have no belief in morality, you're going to let money do whatever you want it to be. You're going to not believe in sound money. So I will keep sharing my religious beliefs. And if you don't believe, good for you. You can be miserable. <laughs> that's, that's on you. So if you look very clearly, you know, you know who said we needed to replace God in the public square? Karl Marx, 150 years ago. The exact economic dire consequences of what we are experiencing today is because we've eroded the family, we've eroded God, and a sense of right and wrong. So we have no concept of sound money. A dollar is not a dollar anymore. A dollar is worth 10 cents, or one penny of what it used to be. So I will keep sharing my personal beliefs, and if you want to share yours, go ahead. What's your tradition? Oh, I have no tradition. I play video games in my mother's basement. Well, if that's what you do, good for you. So... Give us a call, folks, 800-321-0710. You know, feel bad for that person. So, so depressing to live life without faith and hope in the afterlife. But anyway, another way to score a deduction before the tax filing deadline is by contributing to your HSA or your health savings account, provided you had high deductible health insurance in 2022. These accounts offer tax-free benefits, three benefits, of course, an upfront deduction for contributions, tax-free earnings, and tax-free withdrawals for qualified medical expenses. That's an easy one, especially if you're making contributions through your employer. For 2022, the HSA contribution limit for individuals is $3,650, and families can deposit up to $7,300, which qualifies for a deduction to reduce adjusted gross income. So with an HSA, you get triple tax-free benefits, tax-free money on the way in, tax-free money on the way up, and tax-free money on the way out. Next segment, tax rules for Roth IRA accounts don't require owners to withdraw money during their lifetime. A valuable proposition for retirees who don't need to touch the money during their lifetime. 
a valuable proposition for retirees who don't need to touch the money and want to let their investment accounts to continue to grow tax-free. But those rules change once the account holder dies, meaning their heirs could get tripped up if they're not careful. Roth IRAs don't have RMDs during the original owner's lifetime. Those rules change for the owner's heirs, however. Heirs of a Roth must generally empty your account within 10 years. Accounts inherited before 2020 can still use the stretch IRA strategy. So if your person died at 17, uh, 2017, you can still do the stretch IRA. If they die after 2020, they can't do the stretch IRA. Next up, we're going to go to Neil. Go ahead. Hi, Josh. Thank you for your radio program. I have a question regarding spousal IRA. Sure, go ahead. Hello. Spouse IRA. Yeah. I'm 76 working full time. And I have a 403B plan at my work. My wife is 75. Can I open a spousal IRA for her? She's not working. Yes, if you have earned income. Yes, I have earned income. Yes, you're able to do it. So that's a great way to grow money tax-free, pulled out tax-free, or to get a deduction. Now, let's say you own your own business. You can look at a solo Roth 401k. You could look at a solo 401k and more. So, uh, very good. Any other questions, Neil? Okay. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll be back with your questions. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. We're going to talk about Roth IRAs and more. This is Josh Jolinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Tune in to the financial quarterback, Josh Jolinski, this weekend. Then learn how to protect your financial future in a down economy. Josh and his team at the Jolinski Advisory Group can help you lower your taxes and lower your risk in these uncertain times with a 27-point checklist designed to improve your financial health. Whether you're worried about runaway prices, fear of an upcoming recession, or a stock market meltdown, tune in to the financial quarterback and count on Josh Jelinski to call the play. For a free copy of Josh's book, The Retirement Reality Check, call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. Or visit Jelinski.org. That's J-A-L-I-N-S-K-I dot org. Maybe it seems like prices can't get much higher or that the stock market is headed for bear territory. Or maybe you're worried about another great recession. Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, can help you protect your family's financial future in times like these. Tune in this weekend to the Financial Quarterback to hear how Josh and his team can help you decrease your tax liability and lower your risk. Call 888-988-5674 to take advantage of Josh's 27-point plan to achieve financial health. And when you call, you'll receive a free copy of Josh's book, Retirement Reality Check. Tune in every weekend to the Financial Quarterback and call 888-988-5674 to receive your free copy of Retirement Reality Check. Okay, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Uh, JG on YouTube said, I am agnostic and extremely content with a moral and ethical life. Well, um, I'm very happy that you're moral and ethical. I would want you to be. But where did you get that moralism from? Your Catholic grandmother, your Jewish grandmother, you know, Generally, it's due to some impetus of faith in your upbringing where now you're trying to say, hey, I can live the same morality just divorced from that belief in God. But it's still basically the Ten Commandments that you're trying to live. So, but the ethical code of Hammurabi, you know, I, I mean, I'm well aware of history of religions and all that, but I'm very glad you're moral and ethical. Uh, and you're agnostic, that's fine. But you notice you felt compelled to dissuade me of my belief, which is interesting. So uh, I don't really care about your belief. If you don't want to believe, that's on you. God bless you. 
So, uh, go ahead, uh, Jack. He's concerned about the integrity of his brokerage house. Go ahead, Jack. Hey, Josh. Uh, yes, I'm a little worried or concerned about the integrity of some of these institutions, these brokerage houses where I might have an IRA at. Uh, what would happen? I know about this CIPIC insurance, but can you just explain if they if their value was to drop so low that they eventually were going to go out of business, uh, bankrupt, let's say, use that term. What happens to all the people that have IRAs at those houses? Well, um, I don't know. Well, you, we, we don't know. We've never been at this juncture before. I mean, I know in 08, people had like a million bucks in Lehman. They lost everything. And SIPC, I think, protected them up to, what, 500000 what does CIPIC protect you for? Let's go to the CIPIC website. CIPIC stands for the Securities Investors Protection Corp. It's a nonprofit corp. protects the customers of 3,500 brokerages. And you can check out what they protect. So they protect you up to 250000 cash, 500000 against the loss of cash and securities held by a customer at a financially troubled CIPIC member brokerage firm. Most customers of failed brokerage firms are protected when assets are missing from customer accounts. There's no requirement that a customer be a U.S. citizen. So what do you do? Number one, you want to look at the integrity of your financial institution today. That's why at 11 o'clock I have Tom Gober, forensic accountant, who's going to be talking about something called the TSR ratio. You can look up the TSR ratio of your institution now and make sure that how is the money backing every money? That's why generally he and I like mutual companies, fraternal companies, where there is dollar for dollar reserves and the company is not publicly traded on the stock market. If you're concerned because your brokerage house is a publicly traded stock, Call us and we can maybe move you to a privately held brokerage company that is not subject to the whims of the stock market because, hey, maybe it's a good institution, but maybe it's, you know, in jeopardy. Now, I've talked on this uh, with Larry Kotlikoff and others, and he says if you're at a troubled institution— Think about getting like a treasury money market fund where it's backed, where each dollar you have in cash is backed like a mutual fund that's holding treasuries. Or if you're in a mutual fund holding individual securities, at least if your company goes under, you could have uh, the stocks in the index fund or the treasuries in the fund. So the brokerage account can go under, but the mutual fund uh, should remain solvent. Just the value of those stocks may be less. So I hope that helps you. Uh, any other questions, Jack? Okay. Next up, uh, Migalina. Go ahead. You're on. Hi. Good morning, Josh. Pleasure to, to hear your voice. All my life, since I was a teenager, 12 years old, I remember when I started working, I was 13 years old, I would see the men, mostly men, reading the Times, the financial section. I have always been curious about how money works. My oh, I, my closest I have been to finances is the, when I work with, I was in training for Primerica Financial Services. And one of the things my upline Leo Garcia said, have you noticed that the Spanish paper doesn't have a financial page? He, you know, it was more like trying to edu educate us. So when you talk about HSA, IRA, Roth IRA, 401k, I have no idea what you're talking about. So do you, I would love to, do you have like a, a class that you can teach people, even, even in, maybe for the Spanish speaking community, because most of us, have no contact with finances. It's, uh, I, I think this is critical. 
Um, the only time I, I listen to you, but I because I, I don't know the lingo, the HSA, IRA. Sometimes I listen to Neil Caburo, Charles Payne, because I love finances, but it's just like the same way that I love golf, but I never play golf. I mean, uh-huh. I mean, all the things that I, I just want you to to help me learn more about. And I'm 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 retired, and I know that my upline Leo Garcia, he, he I work for City University. He tried, he went to personal, and they were trying to bring our ret- our pension so that we could invest it and it couldn't be done. Now I see all the corruption in, 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 in the colleges and part of what I don't know has to do with, with, with the corruption that we have gone through uh, in this country. Mm. By the way, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm conservative. You know, I am Republican. I'm not going to deny it anymore. If I'm going to, if it, if I'm going to get punished by that, I or or hurt by that, it, it's okay. Because it's it's really. It's some... Well, thank you for listening, Miguelina. You sound like a very sweet woman. Um, uh, yeah, let's do it. Call call me eight 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 nine eight eight Josh. And the beauty of ChatGPT, my my tech guy was just telling me this our chief technology officer, some of the beauties of the new technology is maybe we can build a course. Uh, By the way, we we could do a 45-minute wealth strategy session with you or any of our listeners for free. And we, we have classes that we run with clients before they become a client because we want them to be generally educated, generally over one to three meetings, at no charge, we do 45-minute uh, strategy classes. Call us 888-988-JOSH for that, you or any of our listeners. And if you want it in Spanish, uh, we'll provide it for you. We can, uh, we can record it. We can, then we can transcribe it, and we can transcribe it in your language of choice. Now to some of the beauties of AI. So if, uh, you know, you habla espanol, we can help you. And that's the beauty of technology where we are right now. So I know a little, un poquito, but uh, we could certainly get a Spanish native speaker if that's what you prefer. Or now with software, the beauty of certain AI and uh, different uh, software is now you can take something, we can have it transcribed, by a native speaker, because there's sometimes a barrier there, right? Like you may understand English, but you may understand it more if it's in your native language. So certainly uh, there for you at 888 josh if you want help educating our listeners. So uh, Will wants to clarify. I think the guy is asking the difference between the position in the stock of the brokerage Versus the custodian itself, for example, 70K in a money market versus 70K in shares, is it gone regardless of the invested asset? No. I mean, if the issue, for example, we'll use uh, Acme Brokerage Company as an example. A lot of people worried about Schwab right now because Schwab stock's down. Now, it could be a great time to buy, and I'm not giving you buy or sell recommendations because everything's depressed. And they have seven trillion in assets, but it a um, lot of negatives on Schwab because of the Silicon Valley Bank thing, and because they own a bank, and their bank apparently uh, bought ten-year Treasuries. If you have a stock at Schwab, you're probably okay because you know if. Schwab, the stock goes to zero. There are still assets in the brokerage account. The issue is, what about the cash in the sweep account? How's the cash protected? And so we're auditing money market funds at Schwab, at Fidelity, at Vanguard. And there is no, um, you know, just to make sure you're protected. 
So call us, 888-988-JOSH, and we'll audit that. And I want to be clear. I don't think anybody's going under, but we have a lot of people that are worried because they're watching CNBC, and they see the fear mongering on the TV, and we want to kind of put your fears at ease. So I would, I would say there's a distinction between a federal treasury money market and the cash in the sweep account that's uninsured deposit of the FDIC. What is at risk is the uninsured deposit in the bank, not necessarily the money market fund. Now, the money market fund, the risk is you have a dollar, it could go down to 97 cents, 98 cents. But the protection against that is just by a treasury money market so that worst case scenario, they got to wait three months and they get their money back. Or you could do a short term, you could do seven day paper, you could do 30 day paper. And what that means is you could buy a fund that's a money market that has essentially, they're lending money to the U.S. government for seven days. So indirectly, although your money is not FDIC protected and not 100% principal protected, it is indirectly backed by treasuries of the U.S. government. So that should put you at ease, even if you're in a troubled institution. And I would say troubled is different than the stock went down 30 or 50 percent. Uh, the stock could go down and the company could be very strong. Um, so there have been negative reports on Schwab, but I've also read positive reports. They have seven trillion dollars in deposits and 29. They might have lost billions on the 10 year treasuries. But with the new facility that the federal government has opened up, uh, they can essentially borrow at zero percent to pay back people who want their money right away. Uh, but if you don't like a publicly traded brokerage, you can deal with private brokerages like a Fidelity uh, that's not on the stock exchange. And there's a pro and a con uh, to both. Migalina has another question, and then we have G.I. Jack in Hackensack. Go ahead. Okay, hi. Okay, it, it sounds like your audience is, it has a good income. I don't. My my current income, I would like to know what to do with Social Security and the pension. Uh, also, can you give me the name of the the, the person, the, the, someone I know that has been scammed through, through Facebook and mm. lost a lot of money, lost, lost something precious. Wow. Uh, who I can be. Um, and I did go to one of your interviews years ago, but uh, Josh, I had to tell you, I, I was yeah. not happy yeah. with the result. Well, thank you. Well, thanks. Well, if, um, well, certainly we'll, we'd love to talk with you. And um, I'm sorry you felt that way. So we could talk and um, we'll, uh, yeah, you're not a client, so you didn't have a result. <laughs> so that would be my first kind of pushback. So if you're not a client, so that's the other thing. When you come the first time, we're merely educating you. And we're getting to know you. But um, I know of no client named Migalina. So you can't speak of any results with us. Does that make sense? I remember meeting a woman named Migalina, and she was a very nice woman, so probably you. But, um, you know, wish you the best. Any other questions, Migalina, or comments on that? Yeah, what can I do but with But you got to be very quick, careful, though. I'm letting you speak over the air. You're not a client. So for you to say you're not happy with the result, we've never, oh, we've no, never we invested your money. For one interview. You maybe didn't like who you spoke to. You just call and... Yeah, maybe you maybe didn't connect with the person, but me. you're not a client, correct? You're you're not a uh, you're no, not a paying no. customer. What you meant is you came for a review and maybe you didn't hit it off with the advisor. And that happens sometimes. Um, we have many different advisors. Some some people like my style; they prefer Chris's style better. Some people prefer Paul's style or Howard's style. So there's various. But that's important when you're hiring somebody. You want to make sure that uh, you match with 
uh, the style of the investor. So uh, any other comments or questions on that? Yeah, what was, did you say how was, I, I missed that. Is there something with the audio? Well, no, what I was, was just trying to say is there's different uh, advisors that work with us, different personality types. Some people like one person's style, some people like another. So I spoke with someone over the phone years later, yeah, yeah. maybe three years ago, and he was very nice. I, yeah. I really liked him. Yeah. Well, well I'm glad nice. you had that experience, and I'm sorry you had a negative experience. Uh, my apologies. So, um, you know, we'd be happy to talk with you further. 888 josh We'll be back with Jersey Jack in Hackensack. This is Josh Jelinski. The financial quarterback, don't touch that dial. Tune in to the financial quarterback, Josh Jelinski, this weekend and learn how to protect your financial future in a down economy. Josh and his team at the Jelinski Advisory Group can help you lower your taxes and lower your risk in these uncertain times with a 27-point checklist designed to improve your financial health. Whether you're worried about runaway prices, fear of an upcoming recession, or a stock market meltdown, tune in to the financial quarterback and count on Josh Jelinski to call the play. For a free copy of Josh's book, The Retirement Reality Check, call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. Or visit Jelinski.org. That's J-A-L-I-N-S-K-I dot org. Okay, next up, we got Jersey Jack in Hackensack. Go ahead. First of all, Josh, I wish you and yours, including your cold screeners, God's blessing, especially on the holy Passover season and the Easter holy resurrection season. Question, I'm going to hit you with a few. I rapid fire, then you respond, please. First of all, with this debauchery going on that happened earlier this week in Manhattan, uh, how will that, uh, definitely it's going to affect the presidential election, how will that affect America, the West, free world, the Western world, uh, the uh, economic, fiduciary, financial, fiscal, monetary? And also, will we ever see a city-run American, uh, Amer- city-run, sh- uh, not a shelter, a retirement home for American veterans, New York City, richest city in the world. Only American, major American city doesn't have one. And let's, with God's grace, bring this, this 2013, 2023, rather, that the end of 66% of homeless men and women, American veterans, God help them, and 13,000 American veterans suicides, one every year. Let's bring an end to that. I'm waiting. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, I'm all for the veterans. Thank you for your service. How will Trump's trial affect the economy? I don't think it's a a cause as much as an effect. So the de-dollarization thing and basically the politicization, you know, having political prisoners potentially. Um, I didn't like when Trump said lock her up. I didn't like when the other side says lock him up. You don't want to be in a place where your political opponents land in jail on the left or the right. So I would say that this is more of a consequence of a lack of sound money, sound kind of uh, practices. I mean, it's it's a dangerous precedent where people's political prisoners can be just... Uh, no, I'm not commenting on the political thing. I, you know, it's not a political show, but I would I would probably say it's a consequence of all of this de-dollarization. You know, just like people are weaponizing trade, now they're weaponizing currency. They're weaponizing politics. So it just seems like a symptom of the whole thing. Now, inherited IRA, inherited Roth IRAs carry. Required minimum distributions or RMDs. That means a beneficiary who inherits a Roth IRA generally must withdraw the money within a certain amount of time. Generally, heirs must empty the Roth IRA of all funds within 10 years of the original owner's death. 
but the rules vary depending on the person's relation to the decedent and the year in which they die. A retirement law passed in 2019 creating the 10-year time frame. Previously, your heirs could stretch Roth IRA payments over their lifetimes. A grandchild, for example, could pull money out over decades. Literally, Ed Slot wrote a book called How to Parlay Your IRA into a Family Fortune, which showed a grandparent leaving money to a grandchild, and the money could literally be not paying tax for 80 years, tax-deferred compounding, and you would have very little IRA distributions. Depending on investment growth, the account might never be emptied, but instead keep accumulating wealth free of taxes. This was a big change. They took away the stretch, said Timothy Gagnon, an associate professor of accounting at Northeastern. Now, mind you, there is still a way to stretch. So give us a call, 888-988-JOSH. 888-988-5674. The old stretch rules still apply to earlier inheritances and to some remaining beneficiary types, as explained, as we'll explain later. But here's the thing. Let's say you want it, you love the concept of leaving money to grandchildren over 80 years. You can still do that if you buy stocks that don't pay a dividend. If you do that, you can do that with insurance policies. And you can do that with what are called IOVAs, investment-only variable annuities. And the ones I like are all fiduciary products, meaning they have low fees, like 20 bucks a month uh, for internal charges, no embedded mortality and expense fee. So those are ways to get the stretch concept if you think it's done. Now, the new rules apply to Roth IRAs inherited in 2020 or later. The old stretch rules still apply to earlier inheritances and to some remaining beneficiary types. Distributions aren't taxable if the Roth has been open for at least five years. Investment earnings are taxable if that condition isn't met, however. The typical penalty that applies for early IRA withdrawals before age 59 and a half doesn't apply to an inherited IRA. Withdrawal rules depend on the beneficiary. The new 10-year distribution rule generally applies to non-spouse beneficiaries like your kids and grandkids. But a surviving spouse isn't beholden to that rule. They can roll their inheritance into their own Roth IRA and not have any mandatory withdrawals during their lifetime. They're the only ones that can keep it for the rest of their life and never have to take it out. Other individuals called eligible designated Beneficiaries also get preferential tax treatments. So up next, we have uh, Patricia. Go ahead. She makes Easter baskets. Go ahead. Hi. I want to thank you for your uh, words of wisdom in the beginning of the program. And I, I think it can be summed up prosperity of the heart brings lasting prosperity to the pocketbook. Um, my financial challenge right now is paying for uh, the candy and food in the Easter baskets this year. The candy is costing a fortune. And uh, most concerning is I can't find chocolate lamb. And I'm really disappointed about that because that is what Easter is really all about, the lamb, not, not the bunny. And uh, I even went to a chocolate store that all they make is chocolate, and there was not one chocolate lamb. And I told them maybe next year they could consider. And it amazes me that people say, yeah, I don't know why they don't make lambs anymore. And... Um, so that's my predicament right now that I can't find a chocolate lamb to put in my children's Easter basket. So um, any ideas? Well, you could go to Google. I'm seeing a bunch of chocolate lambs. I know Gertrude Hawk still had chocolate crosses. So I bought a bunch of chocolate crosses. I think Walmart has them too. So, and and this is a beautiful tradition we do. So essentially what my wife does is she will do 12 stations, like the Stations of the Cross. 
And so she'll hide one egg in the bathroom, one egg in the office, one egg in the kitchen, one egg in the various bedrooms with little clues throughout the house. She will then put the Bible verse and the story of of Resurrection Sunday, of Easter, and then she'll say, okay, go to the place where we take a shower. Go to the place where we recline. Go to the, you know, um, or, but some like tip. But I am seeing milk chocolate lambs on Google, and I know Gertrude Hawk had crosses yesterday. And I know yeah. Hershey's is doing them now. I know Russell Stover's is doing them. I think Walmart sells them. But the beauty of this tradition is that as the kids go to different rooms, they're learning the story, they're reliving it, and uh, and then when they see the empty tomb, we usually have some type of thing that we make an empty tomb, that's where they get their Easter basket. So it's a fun little way to uh, to do it. Uh, Target apparently has little lint Easter milk chocolate mini lambs. Who would have thought? So... Uh, very good, and it's a fun day, fun week. Holy Week's a great, great time of year. So, uh, folks, we'll take more of your calls. Any other questions before we go to the break? Okay, we'll comment more on the stretch IRA and the death of the stretch. So if you have an IRA or Roth IRA, listen up. This next segment's for you. 888-988-JOSH. If you want to do the 45-minute Ultimate Wealth Strategy Session. Call now. 888-988-JOSH. Maybe it seems like prices can't get much higher or that the stock market is headed for bear territory. Or maybe you're worried about another great recession. Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, can help you protect your family's financial future in times like these. Tune in this weekend to the financial quarterback to hear how Josh and his team can help you decrease your tax liability and lower your risk. Call 888-988-5674 to take advantage of Josh's 27-point plan to achieve financial health. And when you call, you'll receive a free copy of Josh's book, Retirement Reality Check. Tune in every weekend to The Financial Quarterback and call 888-988-5674 to receive your free copy of Retirement Reality Check. Tune in to the financial quarterback, Josh Jelinski, this weekend and learn how to protect your financial future in a down economy. Josh and his team at the Jelinski Advisory Group can help you lower your taxes and lower your risk in these uncertain times with a 27-point checklist designed to improve your financial health. Whether you're worried about runaway prices, fear of an upcoming recession, or a stock market meltdown, tune in to the financial quarterback and count on Josh Jelinski to call the play. For a free copy of Josh's book, The Retirement Reality Check, call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. Or visit Jelinski.org. That's J-A-L-I-N-S-K-I dot org. Hey, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback so, Patricia, I hope uh, you find your Easter lambs or crosses. Go ahead, Mo. You're on with Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Okay. Good morning, Josh. Uh, I'm working full-time right now. I have a 401k and a, a IRA. I know I have to keep taking the RMD from IRA. So far, I have not, and I'm sure I'm not required to take any RMDs from uh, 401k. My question is, let's say next year I stop working in six months or first, first three months or six months. When do I have to start taking the RMD from 401k? Can it wait until the following year, or it has to be next year? If you're 80 and no longer working or 80 and still working? No, right now I'm working full-time, 45 well, then hours Then you don't have week. to take the RMD on your 401k. It's called the still working exception. This year. My question is next year if I work only for three months and retire. Then you got to do it by December 31st retire. of next year, if it's next year. Oh, I have to take by December 31st? Yes. Next year? Yes. 
Oh, it cannot wait until the following year. No. So that was my question. Yep. So, uh, so in other words, I had to work full year for the whole year next year. So let's say even if your last day of work was December 29th or December 30th. Okay. You still have to do it. When you use the still working oh. exception, this is from IRAHealth.com. RMDs begin in the year you separate from service. Even if the last day of work is December 31 of that year. I see. Now they Only say you're re- keeper- now they say your required beginning date is April 1 of the year after separation. So what's going to happen though is you're going to have two that year. So it's best to take if the last day of work was December 30th, you take the RMD December 31. Because then the next year you're going to have another RMD due. So that way you don't double up. But that's up to you and your tax bracket. One, one, only one more question. What if I just work part-time, per diem, but less than 30 hours a week? And I that's from an article, by the way, by Sarah Brenner, J.D., Director of Retirement Education. The article is entitled, What You Need to Know About the Still Working Exception from IRAHelp.com. Um, if you partially work, I mean, it depends on your 401k plan rules, but there is no requirement that you work 40 hours a week for the exception to apply. But here's the other thing. Uh, if you're, my company if says you, that if I'm working part-time, even maybe 30 hours or less, I can still keep my 401k with them. Yeah, but that's fine. But here's the other problem. I mean, you're 80. How many, it sounds like you're doing fine financially. Go retire. Enjoy your family. You know, money's not everything, right? So unless you really love to work and it brings you joy, don't make retirement on some basis to thread the needle on this weird rule. Does that make sense? I would enjoy Uh, your money. it definitely makes sense. I mean... Your kids or your your family's going to have to pay the taxes anyway when you die. So who cares? I mean, just go retire. Enjoy yourself. If you have the money to retire. If you don't have the money to retire, it's another problem. But if you do have the money to retire, call us. We'd love to help you. 888-988-JOSH. But, yeah, from my reading of the rule, if you work 30 hours a week, you're fine. There's no requirement that you work 40 hours a week. There is no official position from this on the IRS. Now, uh, and a part-time position could still be considered working for purposes of this exception. Although my hunch is after this show, someone from the IRS may be listening, and they may then change this rule. But uh, I, I think if you work 20 to 30 hours based on my reading of the rule, you should be fine. So uh, any other questions, Mo? And then we'll go to Mark. No, nothing. Thanks for the clarification. Have a wonderful day. Wonderful. Thank Next you. up, we will go to Mark. Uh, after the final break of the hour, this is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Maybe it seems like prices can't get much higher or that the stock market is headed for bear territory. Or maybe you're worried about another great recession. Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, can help you protect your family's financial future in times like these. Tune in this weekend to The Financial Quarterback to hear how Josh and his team can help you decrease your tax liability and lower your risk. Call 888-988-5674 to take advantage of Josh's 27-point plan to achieve financial health. And when you call, you'll receive a free copy of Josh's book, Retirement Reality Check. Tune in every weekend to The Financial Quarterback and call 888-988-5674 to receive your free copy of Retirement Reality Check. Okay, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback on Clubhouse. Follow us on Twitter at your financial QB. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And up next, we're gonna have a live YouTube with Tom Gober, forensic accountant. Where is your financial institution safe? So give us a call. 888-988 Josh. Go ahead, Mark. Marky Mark. And the funky bun. <laughs> Good morning, Josh. How are you? Good morning. 
Dodge, uh, Dodge, I'm looking to uh, supplement uh, my income with guaranteed income. I have a pension and my Social Security, and uh, most of my money savings is tied up in my 401k. So I'm looking to get a uh, guaranteed income out of that. Is is the best way to go in annuity, or are there are other vehicles? And if it's annuity, any kind of annuity you'd recommend? Okay, so your objective is guaranteed retirement income, which is precisely what an annuity does. But you want to be careful. There are four basic types of annuities. There are fees or charges, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So the bathwater of annuities, and they got that phrase, by the way, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, because back in the day, I don't know if this is true or not, this is what they told me when... You're driving around Cape May in the Victorian era, you know, horse and buggy. So let's say you had seven kids. The mom and dad took their shower first with the fresh, clean water. And then with each successive child later, you know, so if you had seven kids, the baby, by by the time you were washing your baby, the water was like brown and gross. So that's where they get the phrase, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, because the bathwater was all gross. You throw it out, you have a basin filled with water. So there's the baby, there's the good annuity, and then there's the bathwater, the bad about annuities. But first, there are four types of annuities. Fixed or MIGAs. Those are similarly, sort of like CDs, although not FDIC insured. They're backed by the claims paying ability of the underlying insurance company. So you want to make sure you pick a good, highly rated company. We're going to talk about the TSR ratio, which is a thing that Tom Gober specializes in. He'll be up next on our YouTube. So you want to make sure you pick a good company. A MIGA or a fixed annuity is like, you know, you commit for five years, you make three to 5% typically. So if you put a hundred grand in, you get 5,000 in interest every year for five years. Then at the end of the five years, your money is a liquid. You could pull it out and do something with it. Or you could take up to 10%. You want to ask, what is my penalty-free withdrawal? You also want to ask, what is what are the internal fees? Some annuities have high internal fees. Those annuities are typically called variable annuities, but you can also buy ones with low internal fees or zero internal fees. Zero expense ratios, zero mortality and expense fees. Um, now, sometimes you would have what's called a rider fee for guaranteed income. Generally, they're about 1% to 1.2%. That buys you a guaranteed income for life without annuitizing. You generally do not want to annuitize unless you don't have children because that's surrendering your principal to the insurance company when you die or your spouse dies. So I'm not a fan of annuicide or annuitization, but I'm fine with non-annuitized lifetime income riders for a low fee generally 1.2% or less, that buys you a guaranteed income based upon the claims paying ability of the underlying insurance company that lasts as long as you do when you put your money in. So you put 100 grand in, if the rider says you get five grand a year, you get that five grand a year for as long as you live. If the rider says you get six grand, you could live to your 120, you still get that money. So you wanna watch for fees internal, also what are called surrender charges. Now, surrender charges are a charge if you back out, uh, if you actually back out the fees, you know, so it's like a back-end charge. You only pay a surrender charge if you break the contract. So if you do a 10-year annuity or a 7-year annuity and you leave them in year 5, you would have what's called a surrender charge. So I hope that helps you. Any other questions on that, Mark? No, that's good. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks so much. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us and call us, Mark, for our free annuity review. If you or any of our listeners want to make sure, and by the way, we don't even know if an annuity is right for you yet. That's the Have the financial plan precede the product. We'll go over bonds. We'll go over fixed income strategies. We'll go over CDs. We'll go over... MIGAs, we'll go over annuities, all that stuff and more when you call us for the what to do 
with my income review, 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674. The preceding program was sponsored by the Jelensky Advisory Group. Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated third parties or publications, including Five Star Wealth Manager, Advisory of the Year finalist by Senior Market Advisor, and Top of the Million Dollar Roundtable, are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past so, endorsement uh, of Josh I'm Jelinski be, or Wealth Corp. We're going to be starting LLC. a new YouTube Information live, regarding specific a new one, awards, totally rankings, different. or recognitions and is then available we're on be the starting Wealth Corp. website at Jelinski.org. Tom Gover. Strategies have the potential the for profit or loss. The, Investment the show strategies will such be as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance or and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. Safe. There are no guarantees that a portfolio of strategies or any other strategy will outperform company a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any client or prospective client as a solicitation to affect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice. Due to various factors, including including changing market conditions, the information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Josh Jelinski and Wealth Quarterback do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature, is provided for informational purposes only, and should not be construed as legal or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Investment advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback, LLC. WOR and WA.